know what disorderly is, yes, and I want to tell you that, and this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me. That's all I got to say. I, 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 know, I know what disorderly is, yes, and I want to tell you that, and this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me. That's all I got to say. Sergeant Williams, will you please come up to the front? And have your seat right there. Well, I, I, know, I know what disorderly is, and I want to tell you that. And this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me. That's all I got to say. Sergeant Williams, will you please come up to the front and have your seat right there. You're gonna stand up against the wrong Tell me how you're gonna ever stop being weak Unless you make your mind up to be strong 
You've got to do right Walk in the light It won't be long There's no need of standing up For the right Unless you're gonna stand up Against the wrong Tell me how you gonna ever stop Being weak Unless you make your mind up To be strong You've got to do right Walk in the light It won't be long Let me tell you now It's easy To hate your enemy And it just is easy To love your friend But if you are gonna love like The Bible tells you You've got to let the love of God come in You've got to do right Walk in the light It won't be long Oh, don't you wanna love him better Don't you wanna love him more Oh, can't you hear the singer knocking He keeps a knocking at your door You better make a haste to seek your mate Before you have to meet with the undertaker He will save you right now If you are willing Can't you see the Bible is fulfilling You've got to do right Walk in the light It won't be long Before you have to meet with the undertaker He will save you right now If you are willing Can't you see the Bible is fulfilling You've got to do right Walk in the light It won't be long I said you got to do right Walk in the light It won't be long
The hearing is about ready to get started, but before we get started, we'd like to have a word of prayer. We would ask that you would bow your head. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day. We thank you for your amazing grace. We know that the storm passed through Gordon, but God, we just thank you that we were truly blessed. And we ask that you would be with us as we go through this hearing and bless us and be with us. And we will continue to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in your son, Jesus Christ, we pray we all say amen. 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 And uh, just to say, we are here early today to discuss the employment matter of Sergeant Tommy Williams with the Gordon Police Department. And for the record, as mayor, I would like to state I feel that it's totally unfair to Sergeant Tommy Williams to have this hearing without the presence of Council Member Tolls, who's committee head of the police department. Furthermore, I'm going to give each one of you as council members, the clerk and attorneys, a copy of my memorandum containing a disclaimer with regards to the meeting that was held at City Hall on February 16, 2017 when Chief Mike Hall, personnel director, Clerk Tawana Brown, and myself attended. While I was present, I did not agree to the statement regarding the outcome of that meeting that said Sergeant Williams would have to resign or be terminated. And since council member um, Tolles is not present, then we will move forward. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, we are here uh, on Sergeant Williams' appeal to this council from the adverse decision made by a committee. The committee needed meeting. Uh, the committee meeting decision and or reasons for going behind that decision are not relevant to this proceeding because this is a de novo proceeding before this council, which means this council has the opportunity to hear any and all evidence related to this matter and make their own conclusions uh, as to uh, the employment status of Sergeant Williams. As to this proceeding, it's a less formal than a court proceeding, although we do have a court reporter here. We'd like to remind and encourage everyone, please do not talk over one another because you can only take down one person at a time. Just you've got to know who's speaking and, and understand what they're saying. Uh, it will run sort of like a trial in that you'll be able to present your side first, call whatever witnesses you want to call, uh, present evidence to this council. However, if this council wants to ask questions or has uh, clarifications they need, uh, they're also free to do that. Um, 
the mayor traditionally is the uh, parliamentarian who would be sitting normally in the seat of the judge uh, in a hearing such as this. However, the mayor has just expressed an opinion as to the case. Uh, she has let us all know what her opinion is in the case, so uh, I think it would be appropriate if this council wants to ask to set the mayor aside and install the mayor pro tem to run the meeting. It's up to the council. Clearly, the mayor has expressed an opinion as to the outcome of the matter. However, she is not a voting member either, so it's up to the council. And with that being said, attorney, this is a question. Being that he's the mayor pro tem, he cannot vote. He would retain his vote, yes, ma'am. He would, absolutely. He would just, if there's questions or objections or questions about offering evidence, which are going to be minimal anyway, because it's not like a trial, and pretty much anything the council wants to hear, they will be allowed to hear. Um, Ms. Tones is going to be on the phone call as a council member. That would be up to this council. I don't think the rules prohibit her. In fact, I think they expressly allow her to join via Skype or, or telephone call or anything of that nature as long as there's no objection. Absolutely, <coughs> because she is a bona fide council member and uh, she was present and made it known at the last council meeting that she would not be here. So with that being said, this is where we are. Before we get started, I'd just like to ask that the council does not set aside the mayor. Uh, she doesn't have any voting power for this particular meeting, so it would, it would do no effect to necessarily set her aside. Now, moving forward, uh, we have an investigation here that failed to show sufficient evidence to prove or disprove the allegations against Sergeant Williams. Under OCGA 35A-21B, Sergeant Williams became compliant uh, to make a rest after Chief Hall basically talked to him over the phone and told him that he needed to make sure he got this extra hour in. Uh, there was no actual damage or liability to the city because Sergeant Williams made no arrest during the month of January. Furthermore, uh, White tells someone that you have to pay $250 out of pocket to get certified only to turn around and fire someone after they pay to get certified. <laughs> Additionally, Chief Hall argued that uh, Officer Jenkins was not doing, anything, not doing anything unlawful during the arrest that would make Sergeant Williams hesitate, but reasonably and necessary force to overcome a 120-pound lady uh, that's being physically resisted uh, from an allegedly lawful arrest when she is on the bottom being subdued by a heavier officer doesn't require Sergeant Williams to jump on top of them at this point. Under the state guidelines of the mechanics of an arrest, verbal communication is considered an option for force. So with that being said, uh, we would like to call up Chief Hall. That's up to the council, as uh, the attorney said. I, I don't know. Well, what I would like to make a motion. What is your motion? That we uh, excuse me. Council, you've heard the motion. Do we have a second? I'm bringing, bringing forth the incidents that I received in the discovery pack from opposing counsel. These were the two things that, that were brought up. Are you just talking about the educational hours? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the other one, the okay. last one that you said. 
Okay. The uh, use of force. Well, now from a letter that I received uh, through discovery with Chief Hall directing it towards Sergeant Williams, the incident on there that would determine whether he resigned or be fired was only the education file. Is that correct? <coughs> I think these questions should be directed towards Mr. Hall, the police chief, to get a better answer on that. My name's Bruce Daniels, just by the way. Before y'all go any further, I think the record would also reflect that the motion that was made failed for lack of a second. Ready right here, sir. You swear upon the testimony that you're about to give before this council to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Yes, sir. Sergeant Williams, are you familiar with me? I'm officer, I'm, excuse me, Attorney now, James Green, representing the city of Gordon, Georgia. Uh, this is a hearing in which I will ask you questions in which you must answer them truthfully unless your attorney tells you clearly and directly not to answer. Although no judge is present, this is a formal legal proceeding just like testifying in court. You are under the same legal obligation to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If you do not understand any of my questions, feel free to say so and I will rephrase it. Do you understand what I just told you, sir? Have you signed any written statements, made any recorded statements, spoken to any reporters about the events related to this meeting and hearing tonight? Prior to no. Meeting? No. Okay. Have you posted any statements about these events on any internet site? No. Besides the current case, have you ever been involved in any other employee disciplinary matters? Uh, yes. What were those? Now, I, I was in, involved in uh, uh, previous employment. Have you ever been arrested or convicted of a felony or misdemeanor? No. Have you ever been deposed or testified in court before? No, sir. Have you ever had to testify in a, in a matter involving yourself? Or was it just as an officer? As an officer. Okay. Um, have you read any witness statements or seen any other evidence in reference to this action prior, action prior to this meeting? Read in the witness statement? Yes. And what was the other? Seen any other evidence, such as the video, prior to this hearing tonight? Not that I can recollect. Okay. What is your current occupation, sir? Um, employed with the city of Gordon, how long Georgia. You, how long have you been in law enforcement total? 27 years. Okay. Rough. What did you do before working for the city of Gordon? I worked for the city of Millersville. What was your reason for leaving the city of Millersville? My reason for leaving the city of Millersville was because of the fact that uh, uh, this particular incident that I was telling you about just uh, a few weeks earlier, uh, being investigated for a call and saying that I never went on, which I did go on. Okay. We, we did the investigation and found out that what, was I, what I was saying was true. But yet they suspended for two days uh, uh, for whatever the reason, I guess simply because of the fact that they had pursued me on that particular uh, uh, investigation. But I don't know exactly what was in their mind, but nevertheless, I came clear in that particular investigation. So, so I'm clear that was like their routine internal affairs investigation? Yeah, inside the department. And you're suspended, which is routine for officers to be suspended while they're under internal affairs investigation. Right. And then you were cleared, is that correct? Yes. What was the allegation? Why, why, why would they say you didn't arrive on scene? What made them think that? The 
because it, it was an incident involving a, a body that uh, was a, uh, that was supposed to have been in the area of, um, of uh, China Buffet and North Columbia Street. Um, and at the time I got the call, it was a person down was enclosed in a ditch. Okay, so I went to the uh, area where I was dispatched to go in, and I looked for this a person or clothes or whatever it may have been, but, but I was given the uh, important call. I couldn't find it, and, and due to the fact that I couldn't find it, I asked the dispatch to uh, have the person that gave the call to at least try to meet me on the scene to direct me toward what they had seen or what they had not seen. Uh, they was gone, they was on something else, they was dispatch telling me that they was they was in a hurry and they whatever whatever so I said well I don't see what they're talking about so I'm going to name you say a body or a person are you talking about a human body a human person yeah a human okay. person yeah and did they end up finding a human person I guess later on they had another call the next morning in that general vicinity but this time this was behind Brewster's ice cream shop, all right? So uh, there was a body behind Brewster's ice cream shop, but not in the area where I went. That was another call. I answered my call. Did they make a determination of how long that body had been there? I don't, I, I, you know, once, I, once they told me that, that was pretty much the beginning and ending for me. Okay. Are you not aware of any determination having been made as to the time that that body was there? Now, you know, they did eventually tell me it was skeletal remains of some person that had been missing and so forth and so on. But as far as how long that, that body had been there, I, I really don't, I really don't recall. You know, and I don't think they knew, you know. It was as if someone had just put it there for, for some reason or another. I don't know. Where did you work before the city moved? <coughs> Where did I work before the city of Millersville? I predominantly worked for the city of Millersville. I did oh, independent in uh, my employment uh, after uh, before the city of Millersville. In what what capacity did you work for? Basically, you know, like uh, laying carpet and uh, whatnot. Construction. Construction. Yeah, I would say that. Okay, and you were <coughs> self-employed. Is that correct? No, I, I, was, I was working under, you know, as like a you know a helper, you know. Multiple individuals, or is it the same company? Well, you say, where, where did I work before? It's like a variety of different people. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't one particular individual. Okay. You know. um, did you do anything before you were a contractor, I guess? You better. I mean, that was, uh, yeah, I did work for Central State Hospital at one time. I did work for them. Okay, what, what did you do there? Food service. What was your reason for leaving there? I was, uh, at that particular time when I left there, I was uh, brought up for uh, disciplinary action for uh, not coming to work, you know, at that particular time. What did you do before that? I was just fresh out of high school. <coughs> you graduated high school? Yes. Did you attend any college? No. What did you do to get ready for this hearing today? Did you meet with your lawyer before this hearing? No. How did you find your attorney? I made him through a, a, an acquaintance. I made him through an acquaintance. What's the name of that acquaintance? Um, objection, relevancy. background and how we arrived here and the, the fact that you have an attorney who's retained, I can question you about that and, 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 and your age group. Yeah, you, you can, but I'm just saying I will not answer that question. And I'm telling you you're under oath and I'm not giving I, you that I, option. I, I understand that, you know. Uh, I said an acquaintance. I did say that. And, and what you're telling me is your attorney has instructed you not to answer that question. That's right. Okay. There's no... 
no one saying that the objections are sustained or overruled. That's correct. That's, that there's a lack so, here. So, so, so we'll if you want to yes, put sir. that on me. No, I, I understand. Yeah. You're right. That actually goes on the council for the record. Well, it's, it's on the mayor who's presiding who's not answering any of these objections. Yeah. She's the presiding officer. She, she did not want to be removed. So. Uh, uh, attorney. I have no problem if I should say objection, I'll say objection. Well, we're objecting, you have to sustain. You, have, you can say he has to answer, he does not have to answer. Well, he's being advised by his attorney, so uh, sustain. <coughs>
you have any knowledge that the mayor or any member of council has met or spoken with your attorney prior to today? I have no knowledge, no. Okay. Was anyone else present when you met with your attorney? No. In fact, you said you haven't met with him before today, is that correct? Excuse me? You said you did not meet with him before today? You said today, before today. I, I'm thinking you're talking about this particular day only. Today. Now, that's what I was thinking you were saying. Now, I met with him before today, period, if, you, if you're talking about that. Yes, I met with him in previous time. Now, I, I may have misunderstood your question. Yeah. You have met with your lawyer prior to this hearing? Yes. And prior to this hearing, are you aware of the mayor or any council members meeting with, your same, with the same attorney? No. Did you retain your attorney? Yes. How did you retain him? He financed through my money. Through the money. Cash? Cash. Yeah. Well, check. And what amount was that retainer? Oh. Objection. Oh. Uh, objection. <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> <laughs> what, are the, what, are, what are the terms of your engagement in this matter as you understand? Once again, we're talking about a contract that has nothing to do with the actual appeal of the two claims that Chief Hall asserted against my client. I have the right to inquire as to his contract with you and what, your, what the nature of your contract is and if you have any bias or prejudice resulting from that contract. <laughs> Attorney, Attorney, are we here to uh, inquire about his fees or about the situations with two uh, I fail to see where what he's buying or, or, or has paid for is relevant to the situation. Well, I fail to see. He needs to understand his contract with his attorney. Well, I'm sure they do. Been engaged to do. Okay. And there is some question as to what this attorney has been engaged to do that we've already run up against today. What, what, are you, what are you saying by saying that? What are you asking me? Are you asking me, are we going to take this further? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. I, I want to I know. What are, you, what are you asking me? That's, that's part of that's, it. That's now, basically you, what you're asking me? Well, what, what are the terms he's engaged with? Uh, I mean, are you, you asking here? me Are you asking me that, though? That's what I'm asking you. No, I'm asking you, did your attorney provide you with a letter of engagement? Know what he's objecting to, to be honest with you. Um, it's his duty under the I think Georgia just, Bar rules to provide his client with a letter uh, of engagement. Um, and, and that may be between them, but that's between them. We're here about the uh, city issues of what has transpired with the, uh, and not about how much he's paid his attorney or what have you. Attorney, let's can we move <coughs> forward? Sure. When did you, you first meet Chief Mike Hall? I met him in 04, 2004. How did you meet him? I met him. Uh, actually, I was I was uh, interested in uh, transitioning a little bit. I talked with an uh, acquaintance, uh, Leslie Steele, who uh, is in law enforcement, and I was asking what they hired, and she looked at at that at, at that particular time, and and still she's still current. Uh, a deputy with the Wilkinson County Sheriff. She said, no, uh, but uh, Gordon is hired because they're looking for black officers. They need a black officer, so they're hired. Was it your understanding when you applied for the position that you were applying because the position was open to a black officer? Yes. Do you consider Chief Hall uh, in the employment decision that he made that you're appealing from? Did you consider that decision to be racially motivated? No, you know, uh, you know, Chief Hall never uh, uh, appeared to me as being racist, but he did tell me he did have a problem with racism mm -hmm. at one time. He has to be 
trying to play like a guy, I'm not trying to. He has a problem with people who are racist. He had had a problem with race at one time. That's what he told me. Do you and I was some of our discussion. <coughs> to clarify, do you consider Chief Hall a racist? I had never thought of him as a racist. Never thought of him as a racist. Do you have any evidence that he's a racist? I don't know. That's a question. That's a real big question. Yeah. And it's interesting that you asked me that. Because mm -hmm. I'm interested in this. Excuse me, we were not having a speaking out from the audience. Yeah, I say that I'm, I'm interested in. I don't know. That's what I was saying. That was my answer. What can you give me an example of what you mean? Now you confuse me. Okay. What I mean by no, ask the question again. What I mean by do you have any evidence he's a racist? I, I, I have seen things in the department done toward white officers versus black officers that I don't consider that was fair. I think it was for being biased. I didn't never think, I never questioned it, but it looked shady to me. I I have a I have a I have a problem with just uh laboring people as racist. Because I know racism exists. I know it's a real problem in in America, in the world, in this community. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's a real problem. It's an <laughs> obvious problem. But the thing is, I'm not the type that, in, uh, you know, like, for instance, homosexuality. That, that, that's the thing. But I don't, I don't mess with people who have that, that lifestyle. I know it's there. I know it exists. I go on about my way. Same thing with race or racist people. started working in Gordon, uh, one of the things that really caught my attention, that was a police car bought, a Dodge Charger. And uh, this particular car was bought for a particular officer. It was a white officer. And I worked midnights, and the other officer uh, was assigned another vehicle, which is also a white officer. So, as I as I came on the uh, came on the scene, the officer that I was relieving, who had another vehicle, not the Dodge Charger, he would drive the Dodge Charger home. It was a newer car, of course. He would drive the Dodge Charger home uh, rather than leaving it because that was that wasn't his assigned vehicle. But he would drive that home, and then when he come in to relieve me, he would then park the Dodge Charger and get in his his, uh, his uh, assigned vehicle, okay? So, I mean, when that happened, I, I began to question that. I, I began to question that, and I, I even addressed it one day with, uh, in the presence of Chief Hall uh, and, and this officer that was driving it home because I was uh, working with him one evening. I came to work with him one evening, and uh, he, again, uh, was, uh, was going to drive the Dodge versus his assigned vehicle. So I said to them, I said, what, what's, what's the problem? I can't, you know, I can't drive the Dodge Charger. I mean, is there a problem with me driving the Dodge Charger? You know, I mean, what, what, what's going on? You know, uh, and uh, nobody really said anything. Nobody really answered it. Okay, so that kind of blew over, you know, and I went on about my business. Then there was another incident that that uh, that uh, this particular uh, assigned car was assigned to me. But I elected to come off a night shift at this particular time. I elected to come off night, and I actually, Chief Hall had told me, anytime anybody get ready to leave and they want to go, but right now you're assigned to night shift. You're assigned to night shift, but if anybody leaves, you can always go to 
the, uh, the shift that they left. Okay, no problem. You know, that was the agreement from the beginning. So one officer resigned or uh, uh, went somewhere else. So I was kept waiting on Chief Hall to come to me and ask me, did I, you know, want to stay where I was or did I want to move up? And I never did get that. So I decided to say, well, leave a note or leave, leave a, a statement for Chief Hall to let him know, yes, I want to, I want to change shifts. Okay. So when I change, when I elected to change shifts, it's like all uh, everything broke loose. I had one officer, which is a white officer, tell me, I told them, you're not going to like this shift. And a lot of times, the same officer would do things, you know, like count calls or what and whatnot, and won't elect to tell me anything about these calls that are going on. Actually, he would he would uh, go to the sheriff department and get some of the deputies over there to help him. Also picked up when I was coming through. one officer, which is a white officer, tell me, I told them, you're not going to like this shift. And a lot of times, the same officer would do things, you know, like count calls or what and whatnot, and won't elect to tell me anything about these calls that are going on. Actually, he would, he would uh, go to the sheriff department and get some of the deputies over there to help him. I had one officer, which is a white officer, tell me, I told them, you're not going to like this shift. 
And a lot of times, the same officer would do things, you know, like count calls or what and whatnot, and won't he elect to tell me anything about these calls that are going on. Actually, he would he would uh, go to the sheriff department and get some of the deputies over there to help him. So you're thinking that I'm the, I'm the reason why you, uh, she's going to put me in the, in the chief slot? Is that what? That's why I'm here. This is that's what this is all about. I, I mean, that, I'm just asking you now. Is that what this is all about? Is it? I don't know. You have, you tell me, cause you're the one brought it up. Upon taking office, or shortly thereafter, in January 2014, did the mayor tell you that you were in charge of the police department? No. No. Mm -hmm. No. Did she tell you that this is your department? <laughs> no. Do you perceive yourself to be the chief supervisor? No. Did the chief ever explain to you that he makes a schedule? Did he ever explain to me he makes a schedule? Yes. I don't remember him having to explain to me about anything that pertains to schedule. Do you agree that the chief makes the schedule? I agree with everything, pretty much what the chief is doing, as long as he is within reason. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever heard the 
mayor say that the chief is not on her side or her team? No, I haven't heard her say that. Okay. Have you ever worked on anybody's political campaign? No. Did you campaign for Mayor Lee? No. Did the mayor ever state that she wanted you to act as her personal bodyguard? Yes, she said that. Reason why? Because that was a problem with her going from, from in here to her car. And you know why. Also, that was all kind of hostility here. And I quote, I quote this, like John Coffey said on Green Mile. It was so much hatred in this room, and perhaps still is, feel like bees staying in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm a police officer. I come and go and do pretty much as I'm told. I don't know. What specific issues do you have with Chief Hall's job performance? Well, this one right here is a real issue that I got right here, well, especially when it comes down to. Uh, mechanics of arrest when he was telling me when we had this discussion that officer Jenkins who had uh, Mrs. Johnson subdued and I said that he was he was on top what do you want me to do uh, jump down on both of them he said yeah jump down on both on top of both of them that's right that's what I want you to do and I said wow I couldn't understand it you know and I, I didn't I, I didn't I didn't go with that statement at all We asked Mr. Green to the attorney. No, we're not open for discussion. I'll make a motion that we turn down these minutes because they are not official. That is my motion. We will not have anyone speaking out. Chief, <coughs> not from the audience. We are the one that's conduct the business, not the audience. So if you either do your job or Oh, I, know, I know what disorderly is, and I want to tell you that, and this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me, is all I got to say. Uh, I appreciate it, but hush. Council, what we will do is that we will need to go. Can I get a recommendation that we just adjourn? Sure. <laughs> I offer a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Motion has been made to adjourn. Do I have a second? being certified as a police officer, a sworn police officer, to, uh, to conduct your duties as an officer, to make arrests or whatnot. 
Do you have to do any training to be post certified? Yeah. How many hours is that? Well, once once you're certified initially, you have to have 20 hours each year. Have you ever been before <coughs> or are you currently now post certified? Yes. Are you required to attend and complete continuing law enforcement training each year? Yes. How many hours minimum per year did you say? 20. How long has this been a requirement? Ever since I've been in law enforcement. Have you always remained current with your post training? I've always been current. Have you ever <coughs> failed a post class? Yes, I failed. I failed one. How many times? I failed one last year. Uh, well, I'll say this. this. That was two different classes, but it was pertaining to the same thing. It was in Tosca uh, Library, uh, I-9000. Now, that particular class started out as like a, a transitional class. You know, from uh, uh, I-5000 to I-9000, and uh, I failed that class twice. But then we went to the advanced uh, study of that same class, and then I failed the advanced study. What was the result of your failure? As for score? What was the score? result? Did you get certified? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, on, no, on, on the I-9000, no. Were you able to run the I-9000 as part of your duties? No. Have you ever lost your rest powers as a result of not being current with your training? Apparently I have. I didn't know, but uh, apparently I have. Chief, I had a discussion with you prior to the end of the year of 2016 that you get, had some hours remaining that you needed to complete. Yeah, he, he called me. Uh, I remember the exact date and time, January 26th. He you talked about before the end of the year, December 2016. So when I... I'm talking about before the end of the year in December of 2016. Did he, did he what now? Did you have any notice or knowledge that you had hours that you needed to complete in December? In December? Yes. Oh, I, I was aware of the hours that I had. I mean, for, for the most part, I had, as far as I'm concerned, I had got all the hours. This particular reason why I was uh, lacking in that one hour, because of a computer glitch. And I did an online course. I never did on online courses. The chief is the training officer. I, I, asked, I, asked, I went through him for at least two other classes and, you know, trying to see what he, you know, because he had to send me to those classes. I can't just go. And he never did send me to those classes. So I knew I had to do what I had to do by going online or wherever or however to get the class that I need. When did you take that online class? I took them pretty much uh, starting, I think it was like early November, perhaps uh, mid-November, uh, into December, somewhere like that. I'm, I'm not really certain. It was like several of them. It wasn't one. It was several that I had taken. What was the last online class you took? On? I can't remember. I can't remember. It was like several <coughs> online classes that I took. And at and, and, and one particular class, I know it was, the, I know this one was uh, pertaining to Islam. And uh, I had, it was like, four different uh, uh, sessions of this particular <laughs> class. And uh, I, 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 when I got ready to, uh, to, to take the uh, uh, the uh, fourth, uh, fourth block, I had to, well, the well, fourth block, I had to leave and then come back and take it, I mean, which I did come back the next, uh, for some time, a day or two after that. And, it, and these are uh, computer classes. These classes were my own personal computer that I was doing these classes on. So, Anyway, I, had, I, I realized that I had to do the uh, fourth class, and uh, once I realized I had to do the fourth class, and I, re I, I did the fourth class, and I was trying to wait for their, them to acknowledge that I had completed the class, and I never did get that acknowledgement, so I called uh, uh, Forsyth to, to explain to them what was going on, and I, I wish I could have remembered the guy who I talked with at the time. He said, well, you know, we, we've been having problems out of that particular class, so... Uh, you know, I, I said, well, is there any way you can, you know, make it where I can take it or, some, you know, uh, help me out where I can get that class because I need that class and stuff. 
And uh, he never really got back with me, you know, so, so I knew I had to take some more class. I, I, I couldn't wait on him to get back with me about that particular class. So that was it. So were you still trying to complete your hours and take classes over the end of 2016? Uh, as far as I know, I was. As far as I know. I was still trying to get my hours in, yeah. Yeah, that's what you asked. Yeah. Do we know that you failed to do that? I failed to do that? That's correct. No, I didn't know that. I failed to do that. No, now. I, I found now, yes, I found now that I failed to do that. But I didn't know that I had failed. As a sergeant, do you expect the officers to keep their post certification clear? I'm not, I, I, that's, that's another thing, I'm glad you asked that question. In Gordon Police Department, from what I understand, the, the chief order, he is the supervisor. We might wear the rank, but he is the supervisor. We don't, we don't uh, uh, enforce our rank, in other words, we don't, we don't delegate over other officers. Well, you've already stated that you've known the entire time you're in law enforcement that you had to maintain so many hours a year. Yeah. And is it your understanding that every officer knows that? I don't know what every officer knows. I, they should know. If they've been in law enforcement, they should know. I don't know what they know. Well, does, po does, it post, does post make a hazardous Mr. felony Mr. that you Mr. need Mr. to maintain Mr. your hours? Mr. Mr. Green. Mr. Green. I know about officer, uh, Sergeant Williams. I know about him. I know about him. Have you been instructed previously by Post that you must maintain your hours to maintain your arrest powers? No, I, I had been instructed, but I knew about the, the fact that you got to keep the 20 hours up. How did you know that? I knew it from the very time I got hired as police officer. Told you. In 89. Mm -hmm. Who had told you in that? I guess Paul. Right. I mean, it's been that long. During the time that you were not post certified and did not have arrest powers, did you continue to perform your duties as a law enforcement officer? Excuse me? During the time, as of January 1st, you didn't have the hours, so when the chief got notice from post, the, the end of January or the beginning of February when it was established, you did not have arrest powers because you did not have your post hours current. Did you continue to perform your duty as a police officer during that time? Okay, let the record reflect that as far as I was concerned, I had my hours. Did you confirm that you had your hours? How, how was I to confirm? It never happened Get before. Get writing from post. Excuse me? Get writing from post. The post don't write us. The post don't write people and say, well, you got your hours. They, I mean, it's just, a, it's just a given. I took the necessary class. I went back online last year. Last year, I remember looking at the, the classes that I've taken. I counted them up. I counted up the hours that I needed. And as far as I was concerned, I had the hours. So is you're aware that you could go to the post and they have an online ability? You, the post is online. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I'm right. aware of that. Yeah. You're aware as an officer that you're able to log in to post online. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah. And you're also aware that you can get your hours through post online. Well, you time. know what? I just got aware of that last year by post. About the, all the online classes, I got. I was aware of it. I, they, they brought it to. My, and when I say when I say they, other officers brought it to my attention last year. I began to do the online classes last year. Post. The year that I that, that I, I had a computer glitch, a computer glitch. 
the ve- that was the very first time. The very first time. I'm not speaking of the classes, though. I'm speaking I mean, of the post. The post. Dude, if you go online on post. I don't go. See, I don't go online on post. I don't even mess with post. As far as I'm concerned, post is post. And I'm, I'm a police officer. We never had no dealings until this year. That's me and post. This type of dealing. To this year. So you, I don't deal with post. You didn't try to confirm your hours. I don't do it. I never did. This a lot of times that was that being confirmed within the agency that you work for. A lot, uh, you know, your your training officer make sure all your officers have their their classes. They make sure every officer is ready to go into the following year. The training officers do that, uh, attorney. But you can. Uh, I mean, what, what 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 are you trying to say that I'm being negligent? I'm saying. I you mean, know. that's what you're saying. I'm saying you know you. Can I mean, but what you're saying, I'm being negligent. Now that's what you're saying. I'm asking the question. I, I know you are, and I'm, I am telling you what you're that. saying. What I'm saying is that you know you can go online and get I, that information. I know a lot of things. I know a lot of things. Do you know that your post hours are available online? Objection. Ask and answer. Is overruled. Yes, the question is, excuse me, do you know that you can go online and get your hours? I just said that, yes. Okay. I said that. I keep saying it to you. What, you, you trying to get a rise out of me or something? Do you understand that the city was exposed to potential liability because you did not have your powers of arrest no. for the month of June? No, I, I say this. If, okay, if if I was aware, the chief was more so aware. He was more so aware. He's not here. He's not in this seat. Would you expect that if the chief knew you were not certified and had no powers of arrest that the chief would keep you on the schedule. He did. He actually did. And so you're saying he actually did. I'm gonna tell you he, I'm gonna tell you you didn't hear me you didn't you didn't uh, you didn't let me finish. January the twenty sixth he called me. Hey man yeah I got I got an email from uh post saying you you are uh, deficient in one hour. I said oh yeah uh, you know he said, I know they didn't make your day, did it? I said, no, I didn't. You know, I said, well, and then he gave me the information, you know, how to contact folks. I said, okay, thank you. You know what I'm saying? So that night of January 26th, which was a Thursday, he called me at noon, 12 noon. That night, I had to go to work. Go to the police department. And I went to work. I then came back in the, fall, the Sunday night, which I was scheduled to come back to work that Sunday night. Then I had to go to work again that Monday night. Mm. Do you understand that the city has no law enforcement liability insurance? I don't know about what the city has as far as insurance. I don't know what they have as far as insurance. I don't. <coughs> I mean, I stay within my sphere, right in my little, where I need to be. That's what I do. I don't engage in a lot of this stuff that that you are assuming that I'm engaged in. You know, or you are thinking that I mean, or you are knowing, apparently you seem to be knowing something about me that I don't know. So I don't know. Understanding of the incident which gave rise to your suspension. What's my understanding? Yeah. I understand the fact that I was charged with 
failure to assist an officer. That was the initial charge. Uh, the, uh, February the 10th, now the 16th, February the 16th, this, about this deficient owl came out. After I had took care of that. As to the failure to assist, were you the first officer dispatched to the scene? No. Did you record this incident on your camera? No, my camera was out. My, my camera, and that's another thing. When we got the cameras, we just got the cameras. And uh, we weren't instructed of how the cameras work. We got the, uh, as far as the instruction, but we weren't instructed as to how the cameras work, which I was sharing this with the chief. I say, well, I didn't know that the camera would just automatically go out, even though I'm, I, now I was assuming it was charged up and ready to go. I didn't use it. So I figure if you don't use it, it continues until you use it. And I, I discussed this with the chief. He said, no, they, they do go out, you know. So mine, I realized one night when I was got ready to use mine, it went out. And uh, I had to charge it up. So I didn't have it at the time because it needed charge. So during this incident, you didn't have your body camera at all? No. seen at this incident, were you aware that your arrest powers were not current when you responded to the call? No. Okay. Were you aware at some point that Officer Jenkins was attempting to effect an arrest? Uh-uh, no. Not, you know what? Until he until he actually did. And see, I want to say this about that. When he, because it really surprised me. I, I it, it really, I was surprised and shocked. I really, I, I seriously, and, it, and I hope it no reflection on him. I'm sure he's a good officer and everything like that. But I, I was surprised and shocked that I was trying to figure out how, what, what, what did she say to cause him to do that? I, th th that was my mindset. And when I got my bearings together, you know, they was on the ground, and I was there. I said, "Well, Rick, get up off, get up off," you know. And then I, I had to nudge him to get up, get him up off, him. and I said, "Miss Jones, get up and put your hand behind your back." That's basically what it. So at some point you were aware he was trying to arrest her. Yeah, I mean, it, once, it, once he did, I mean, it, it was there. Right. When you were aware that he was trying to arrest her, did you assist Officer Jenkins? Yes, I did. In gaining physical control of the suspect? Yes, I did. Was she actively resisting him? Not that, I mean, well, 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 I said, he was on top, she was on the bottom. I wasn't seeing nothing but him on top. And I went there at the same time, I was moving him out the way, trying to get her up at the same time. I mean, I, I said, uh, Rick, get up, get up off, get up off. Once I got my, now understand this, once I got my bearings back, you know, because it shocked me, you know, it really did. It was, it, I was startled because I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have thought, I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything that she, have, she could have said, uh, you know, at that particular time for him to, I, I, just, I was just shocked. And, but he, of course, he bounced, why, wow, you know what I'm saying, but. It just, I, I, you know, it wouldn't have went that way with me. No. So at the time that you saw this happening, did you think that Officer Jenkins was attempting to make a false arrest? You know what? I didn't even think about false arrest at all. I knew it was wrong. Now, that's what you asked me. But I didn't think about false. But I knew it was wrong. In what way was his arrest wrong? Initially, when he went in and on her, he said, I'm finna lock you up for obstruction. And and grab, I mean, grab, literally grab. Now, usually when, when a police officer go, you know, offend, make an arrest on a person, they talk to them and, and give them command, verbal command, to you, uh, whoever the person they're talking to. And in, even in the mechanics of arrest, you never get emotional. You never get physical with a person unless it's absolutely necessary. And uh, he, he, I mean, if he had said, uh, Ms. Johnson, now I'm gonna I'm tell you, you keep on saying such such thing, you know, I'm gonna put you on the rest. Or he, uh, Ms. Johnson, would you turn turn around, put your hand behind your back, I'm gonna place you on the rest. Now that would have helped me so much better. But no, that's what he was doing. But I mean, it was like he went from zero to 100 in a matter of a minute, in a, in a minute.
Did you make physical contact with the suspect while they were on the ground? I made contact with him. I pulled him up off of I said, Rick, get up off. I, at least I pulled him by the shoulder. I had told him, Rick, get up off And he didn't hear me, apparently. So I had to nudge him by the shoulder, Rick, just get up off you know. And then, I said, Mr. Johnson, get up. You know, I did touch her arm to lift her up off the ground. We put her toward the truck. He came up with the cuffs. He cuffed her. And what she was seeing me doing, I was double locking the cuffs to keep them from locking up, jamming up. While they were on the ground, was Officer Jacob struggling to gain control of the suspect on the ground? He was struggling. Yeah, he was definitely struggling. Did you understand that every second the Officer Jacobs and the suspect were on the ground, they were both being injured? No, I didn't understand nothing about no injury at all. In fact, it doesn't matter if, if there was from when she had requested EMS prior to uh, Officer Jake, prior to him. EMS was on the scene. Uh, the EMS was on the scene after we had gotten her off, off the ground. I didn't, you know, Officer Jake had never requested to see EMS or nothing of that nature. So I didn't, I didn't think he was even injured, you know. Injured. I think I seen the, the, his, this knuckle right here had a scratch and that one had a scratch, I think. In your line of work, in your many years you've been in law enforcement, have you ever been involved in an altercation like that? Oh, multiple. Wound up on the ground? Multiples. I've been all down the hills, grounds, yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, were, all that. Were you ever injured during any of those incidents? No. 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 So because you weren't injured, <coughs> is that, is that what you cause you to believe that they're not being injured? I don't know what to, I didn't know what to believe now. Listen, don't put words in my mouth because I don't know about what pe other people. Yeah, I can only talk about me. You asked about me. I, I don't know about the other people. Well, you, you told me your words are they're not being injured fighting on the ground. I didn't say they were going to be injured. Did you, did you hear that? I, did, you, did you hear that? Were they being injured? I don't know. But I, I'm asking you, did you hear that, though? Because sometimes you, you have to be careful how you listen, see? <laughs> you know, serious, serious. No, you know, man, I'm not trying to be a judge. I'm not trying to be a jokester here. I mean, you really do, because sometimes you can hear things that wasn't really seen. You know. Did you understand that every second Officer Jacobs and the suspect were on the ground, they were both being injured, and you said no. You said was I aware, right? I said, said did you understand? Understand? I said I don't know where I don't know. I didn't understand nothing. Neither, by, neither one of them. I don't know. It was not your I understanding. Did, I, I, I'm telling you, uh, Lawyer Green. Listen, I was shocked out of my wits. I had to get my bearings to think of what to do. Cause I never been involved with an uh, officer to, in that in that kind of capacity. I never. I'm talking about, it was a shock to me. And you want to ask me that? I mean, you want to ask me that? I mean, you want to ask me that? And I'm telling you, you want to ask me that? Yes, I, I don't understand this. What, what, what are you doing? What are you asking me? I'm asking you. I mean, what are you asking me? Was it your belief? What? As you what are you asking me? I want to know, what are you asking me? I'm asking you. Because you're not asking me nothing. You're telling me. You're telling me. You're telling me what I am and what I did and what I not did. That's what you're doing. You're telling me about the mayor. You're telling me about the chief and all these people. You're telling me. You're not asking me. It's a kind way of saying I'm asking you, but you're telling me. And I'm telling you. I don't have nothing to do with what's going on here. And I'm going to tell you something about Gordon. i tell you what. I told somebody when I came to Gordon, I was so jolly about Gordon. Gordon was a beautiful place. I never thought it existed anymore. There are, are people can come and, 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 lock, and not lock their doors. And, I, and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, the truth came out about Gordon. There's a hidden, there's a hidden agenda. I call it the beautiful side of evil. That's what it is. It's evil. It's beautiful. Oh, how you doing, Tommy? You doing all right? Hey, hey, hey. You doing fine? But it's evil. It's evil. It's evil. This is evil. Right here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we can't really 
put you can't pinpoint it. I, I wonder it's this, I wonder what this is. But let me tell you something, Lawyer Bray. I'm gonna tell you something. And all these people that's listening, void has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. So, has you ever been diagnosed with anger management issues? <laughs> so, has you ever been diagnosed with anger management issues? <laughs> so, has you ever been diagnosed with anger management issues? <laughs> so, has you ever been diagnosed with anger management issues? <laughs> He just hired one. So I think he kind of, he just, just hired one. Were you the only one while you were there? I mean, full time, that is. He got some part time, but he, I was the only full time officer, yeah. Yeah. So what, what happened? So are the part time still there? or? I mean, they're on the schedule. Now, I mean, they come and go as please, at will. You know, they can be scheduled to come to work, but they may not show up, you know. Uh, now, some that's you know, pretty consistent, you know, uh, stuff like that, as far as I'm concerned, they're on the schedule. Uh, and have you noticed any different treatment between any of the black police officers or the white police officers? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, no further questions. Including yourself, how many full time white officers are there? Including myself? I mean, including yourself. How many full-time black officers are there? Now it's two. They include me now. How many full-time white officers are there? Uh, one, two, one, two, three. Are we including the chief? Are we including the chief? No, we're not including the chief. Okay, three, from what I understand. And how many part-time white officers are there?